Thank you for joining me back on here on the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast to talk about this last segment I have on the Las Vegas Raiders drafting Brock Bowers at the 13th overall pick in the 2024 draft. A lot of people had some confused looks on their face, a lot of surprises just because it didn't seem like the Raiders quite honestly needed a tight end at 13. They certainly could have gone offensive line or defensive back, but I also am of the mindset that Brock Bowers was a top 10 talent, so to get him at 13 from that sort of logic, it made sense. It was a steal from that logic, honestly, to get him at 13 if he was a top 10 talent, but now, obviously, you can't change it. They're going to have to try and make the best out of it right now because their most glaring need was obviously a quarterback and how sort of... Does Brock Bowers help that whole situation in making it easier for a quarterback? That is the question on hand. Can this sort of two tight end look now for the Las Vegas Raiders make it easier for the Raiders to deal with this quarterback situation having Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell? Not your typical franchise quarterbacks, obviously. I don't think anybody would paint them in that way, but... Can having two tight ends make it easier for the Raiders to exceed some expectations without having the the top-of-the-line quarterback um, in their building? Well, it starts um, also with their new offensive coordinator, Luke Getze, coming over after his two seasons previously with the Chicago Bears. Has already been showing Brock Bowers clips of Cole Komet, watching him in his system and how they want to implement him similarly to how Cole Komet was used in Chicago with Luke Getze there. If you look at Cole Komet last year with Luke Getze, he had a very solid year, sort of of a breakout year. You know, he didn't have eye-catching numbers, but at the same time, he has shown that steady progression over the years under Luke Getze. So that is a positive if you're Brock Bowers, if you're just the Raiders in general, to have a guy in their calling plays, having succeeded in the past with past tight ends, I think has... A very good picture painted for them in that aspect, but also now the idea for the Las Vegas Raiders now could be maybe exploring the realm of having more 12 personnel in their play calls. If you're unfamiliar with that, I won't try to sound too technical, but 12 personnel is basically a formation that you have on the field with one running back, two wide receivers, and two tight ends on the field, how you line them up on either side, how you orient how you orient them um, and maneuver them throughout the play, you know, is up to each team that does it. But basically, in simplest forms, it's just having two tight ends out there, two wide receivers, and one running back. The Las Vegas Raiders ranked 31st using 12 personnel under Josh McDaniel. So um, they only lined up in it only 5% of their plays. Now that they have Michael Meyer in there and also Brock Bowers, you would think that they're going to be lining up in this a lot more. And it's funny now that they have Lou Getze in there um, as their offensive coordinator because with Chicago, he had them line up in 12 personnel 17% of the time, which was 21st in the NFL in 2022. Then it jumped all the way up to 8th in the NFL last season by running it 23% of their plays in Chicago with two tight ends. And also Luke Getze on top of that and sort of having success with tight ends. He was behind the NFL's number one and number two ranked rushing offenses in 2022 and in 2023. And that obviously has to do a lot with running this 12 personnel idea and bringing that over to the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, It is something that I am a fan of because if you have these two guys, you know, Michael Meyer struggled well he didn't struggle but he missed the last three games of last year with a toe injury so you had a missed opportunity there to really close out the year strong and uh dealing with that injury he did show some good flashes you know being drafted in the second round um there does come some expectations with that especially because the Raiders traded up to get him and he did show some good signs also showed that he was a rookie now with Brock Bowers coming in I think they can get a little bit more excited because He has been touted as this generational type of tight end, can line up anywhere. Now lining him up alongside Michael Meyer, I think opens up a new realm of opportunity for them because if you line up back again in this 12 personnel, you can have both tight ends out there and outside of just being great pass pass catchers, they are great blockers. And not only that, 
it makes it a little bit more predictable if you're looking at the defense because obviously if you have more bodies out there and it looks like you're going to run because of the formation 12 personnel the defense will come down a little bit more you won't have side such high safeties on the back end of the field it might open up Devontae Adams a little bit more if the defense thinks you're going to run it you can do a lot of things with 12 personnel and moving players around and just really having more running gaps as well which will certainly help a guy like Samir White who was thrusted into that running back one spot last year after Josh Jacobs got hurt it'll certainly help him out Uh, Alexander Madison coming over from the Minnesota Vikings. You have Jacoby Myers as well, who is a very underrated wide receiver. And if you have a lot of people focusing in on the run just based on the formation, it'll obviously help out Devontae Adams a lot more, which is the guy you ultimately want to get the ball to most because of his talent. I don't really have to go into why. Uh, But head coach Antonio Pierce also commented on his new two tight ends, and he said, We're fortunate enough to have two tight ends on our roster that in the last four years of college football were pretty much the two best, and hopefully that creates issues. It's going to create issues for us at practice in our division. We've got some really good tight ends, so it'll be good reps for us as well. And Michael Myers also commented on the idea of having Brock Bowers in there alongside him, saying that both of them can pretty much do it all from a tight end standpoint and he believes that the duo will really elevate this Las Vegas Raiders offense across the board and I just listed off some reason as to why I agree with Michael Meyer just because of the different looks they could give defenses sort of tricking them into thinking they might run out of the 12 personnel passing out of it and you have two great options in Meyer and in Brock Bowers It's certainly going to be something to watch because I think the biggest thing with this is just making it easier for Aiden O'Connell if he's your starter or Gardner Minshew as well. They're not the future at the quarterback position, so you so you say you want to just get by. It is a um, ugly term to use because Gardner Minshew did play all right, but in reality, they are going to look for a future franchise quarterback at some point. And with these two guys, you don't want to make it that much harder for them to maneuver through this offense. If you have two great tight ends, you have a pretty safe formation where it's not spread out. You don't have all these options to think about. It's pretty quite simple when you just look at the two tight ends and two wide receivers. Simplifying it a lot more will make it better for Aiden O'Connell or Gardner Minshew to have a lot more success in this offense if they don't have to think about uh, trying to get it to this receiver or this receiver. What zone coverage are they running? Is the protection sliding the right way? Making that all a lot simpler will certainly help these quarterbacks. And I think with the Raiders, this year the biggest thing is just showing that growth. If they show improvement from last year with Brock Bowers coming in there and this offense looks a little bit better, not only will that help Antonio Pierce's case as a new head coach, but also... It'll have more merit for them to get the front office, the general manager, to buy into more of this project and do whatever it takes to get that franchise quarterback in there. It starts with this season. You don't have to expect a division title, them being in close games with the Chiefs. But just like I mentioned before, getting better is the biggest thing. I think drafting Brock Bowers can certainly do that for them. On a lot of standpoints, like I mentioned, they just have to go out and sort of execute it at this point. They have a lot of time to nail down these plays, nail down how much Brock Bowers will be of a factor. I have a lot of confidence in them. I think Antonio Pierce is the right guy. Now executing it is the biggest point of it, but we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. But for right now, that'll do it for me on today's episode of the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. I want to thank you guys for tuning in and also remind you guys to please like, follow, and subscribe to the show. Make sure to also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok for more of this network's content. And if you want to see more of me and this show, make sure to check out the GSMC Sports Network channel and the GSMC Podcast Network channel on YouTube for all the live Recorded shows are all posted on there, as well as YouTube shorts are all posted every weekday. And if you don't have time to watch an entire show, there are individual segment videos. 
in case you don't have time to watch a whole show, you can watch a certain segment on either channel. As a reminder, tune in every weekday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time for more NFL and football conversations with me, Manny Maradiege, as your host. Thank you guys for joining me once again, and I expect to see you guys all back here joining me again tomorrow. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Yeah, damn, ain't that great? I don't wanna go.